Hey there, guys. Let's see if this antenna core is any good. See if it has any life in it at all. Hook the ground up. Use a little screwdriver to get to the terminals. Yeah. Looks like we got a pretty decent core. Now to rebuild it. What we got going today is we're gonna rebuild this antenna. Uh, this is, uh, I think, 61 to 64. There's a lot of um, different variations. They take different masts, and we can supply the mast uh, for many different uh, years. So you can check the link in the description below for that if that's what you need. Other than that, these things need just generally to be cleaned up and relubricated. First thing we do is um, we disassemble the, um, the mast. Uh, area this tube here and you will want to note the direction that this clamp here is and note that the uh, connection for the cable is pointing the same direction as the motor so that it goes back together properly what we do is take out these three bottom screws wiggle it apart And we'll go ahead and cut that. We can take the and you'll also see that the screws here are a little bit different. The ones that go in the base are blunt and the ones that go on the antenna connector are pointed. So just keep that in mind. Sometimes they might be mixed up because somebody's been here before you. We take the connector, clip the wire on that, and it allows us to remove the mast. And always verify that the one that you've got is correct. Yep, because they are different lengths is the main difference. Other than that, they all pretty much look identical. Now I'm gonna take and um, when you're doing this job, you want to disassemble this top steel bracket, de-rust it, clean it all up real nice, For the and same with this part. But today, I'm showing you guys how this, the mechanics of this, so I don't have the time to, to clean all that up and clear the rust off. So now we just got the motor assembly. A lot easier to work with. And this one's got a damaged connector. And the way these connectors come apart is... You can very easily see it here on this on this one that's broken. If you look, if you get in there with a pair of pliers, you get in there and squeeze and pull. That, that's a little catch. So that's how these come apart. You can get in there also with a with a screwdriver and push on the pin and get them to come apart. Just a little trick. Okay, first thing we got to do is take this cover off and it's kind of crimped on and I usually can get them to pry off Sometimes you got to push in on the crimp okay notice there's a vent the vent is at the top Now this is the clutch mechanism. When these antennas work properly, and they go up all the way, you, you'll hear this click. When they come down all the way, you'll hear this click. So we want to very carefully take this apart. Um, this And there's various ways that this nut is retained. Sometimes there's a pin that jams it. The, the shaft has a flat side and there's a pin. This one here has got a jam nut. So let me go over and get, grab the wrench for that, and I'll show you how that comes apart. These usually have the uh, pin type of uh, keeper, but that's what I was ready for. But this one doesn't. I think it depends on who manufactured it. So we're going to take the jam nut off. Make 
sure the other nut's not following it. The large nut 7 16 and the jam nut's 3 8 Now what we have going on here is this nut sets a pressure on that spring. That spring pushes down on this plate. There's two ball bearings, one here and one here underneath the plate. And those work against an indent little bumps there and there on the drum. So we want to kind of put this back together the way it came apart for an initial tension. Service manual does explain how to do this. So if you do have a service manual, it does explain this process. But this, I like to start with the same starting point. I'm going to count the number of turns to take this nut off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Six or seven, close enough. Small washer underneath. So I'll lay these out in the order that, they, that they've come off. We have the drive pin here. That's the problem that these things often have, is the grease is just hard as a rock. That, and then the two little ball bearings, which I'm gonna put in the cover. And this is the cover for the drum. And the cable as it comes, the nylon cable from the antenna comes down here there's a little bumps on the on this cover and that's what pushes the cord into the housing where it's stored so usually if the motor's running and the antenna doesn't move and you can pull the antenna up and down it's because the cable's broken so this is the gearbox now couple of Phillips head screws. This is a place you're going to want to be careful when you take this cover off. Sometimes because there's little gears and little washers underneath this and things stick to one another. So you just got to be careful. So this is the output gear. And always, like I say, these were made by different manufacturers sometimes. So you may have one that looks I I identical to this, but it might be a little bit different as to the, where washers are and things like that on the inside. So I always check, make sure nothing is stuck. Make sure there's no washer or anything like that. You can see this grease is cease to be grease at this point in time. So the way this works is you have the motor there, that small gear. The motor drives this gear, which is connected to that gear, which drives these two. And now you're trying, you're multiplying the torque. So this final output gear is driven by both of these small gears. So that's how the gear reduction works in here. I check these some of these will have a um, a wave washer on the top this one does not seem to Pull out. and uh, all three of these this one's stuck in here pretty good very carefully try to get it up and out uh, these three sets of gears are identical, so they interchange. And these uh, pins that they're mounted upon uh, can come out. 
They don't always want to. Sometimes that's the best way to get the gears out is to pull the pins out of the housing. Checking it for any washers. Oh, that's right. There is a little hidden one underneath. I forgot that one. That's your initial reduction that goes from here, here to here. So that the, the nylon one is the first one. And down in there underneath the nylon one is this little felt a washer that needs lubricant. That's what it keeps, it keeps the side of this gear wet. The last item to come out is that's uh, the drum where the cable goes. And the last part to come off is this plastic cover. You get just you get you get it up a little bit, and it gives you an area to little ledge to pry on. motor looks to be in pretty good shape um, if the motor runs decent like this one does see this one runs pretty good this one just needs lubrication sometimes you do have to take them all apart and uh, turn the armature if, the, if it's been worn down or been arcing but this one turns pretty easy, just so just as is. So we'll clean all this grease out and get and clean up all these parts, and we'll be back with you for a reassembly. So now we got all the parts cleaned up, all the old caked on grease out of there. Grease, it's hard like bubble gum on the underside of a school desk. That's what it turns into. Uh, checked all the gears, nothing's chipped. Everything looks good. So basically there's two stages to reassembly. One is to assemble the, the, the gearbox and get the motor back in order. Then the other is to, to install the new mast and get the cover back on. So I'm gonna get in here with a little bit of light oil. Give this motor just a little bit. I get some down here around this gear. I'll power the motor up. Circulate the oil around. Run it both directions. So if you have a power supply that's got, uh, that reads out the current, kind of keep an eye on that so you know what the no load current draw is. That'll help you know if you got something binding up and or if the motor's just have to work way too hard for some reason. And we'll put the, the cover back on this side of the motor. And we'll use some white grease and we'll get in here and just kind of get some onto that gear put this felt washer in soak a little oil into it Now these pins can give trouble because you'll get a little oil or grease around them and they'll make like hydrostatic lock and they won't want to press in all the way. So try to keep excess grease out of these holes and make reassembly a lot easier.
when this goes together, you have to line up all three pins. Have to be lined up with the with where they go into this housing. And then this gear has to mesh with those two little gears. This can be frustrating to put together sometimes. This can be extremely frustrating at times. And what I will sometimes do is turn the voltage down on my supply to get the motor to turn a little slower. And do like that and just get let it rotate a little bit. While I get it seated. And that went together very easily. Expect to have difficulty, guys. I've done hundreds of these. In fact, one of your cars may have one that I did. I like to let it run while I tighten these down to make sure nothing binds. Just keep the current in mind if, you're, uh, if your power supply has that so you can monitor how hard the motor's working. Now we have our new mast. And we are going to compare it out of the package to our old one. That looks good. Now the process for feeding this in, now this is gonna seem a little bit counterintuitive, but when you feed this in, you have to be applying grease to it at the same time, or this it'll just bind up in the housing. And the white grease is what the service manual recommends. fits together like a little puzzle. Now I initially, I know I counted turns before. If I have trouble getting this to set right, I'll loosen that and, and count them again. You need to get the grease evenly distributed on this clutch plate. Just like that. So now what we want to do is initially get some grease on the end of that cable. And jam it in there. And we're going to just suck it in there a little bit at a time. small amount of the white grease. The blue wire is your down wire. Remember the um, connector for your antenna cable points towards the motor and so you want to have your, your little lead wire pointing towards the motor side. And this has uh, several different size indentations. The two larger ones will line up. This side will line up with there. The other side looks the same. And so you want to push that into the housing, not with the mast. The mast is will slide. 
you want to push on the black part and push it all the way down so it's only sticks up just under a quarter inch we have our lead-in wire <clears throat> verifying that this is in all the way we bring the outside tube onto it we have our three blunt screws what these screws do is they go through that black uh, plastic on the bottom of the mast now I did uh, dip the parts in uh, the rust killer for probably about two and a half hours between the start and the finish here So now what we can do is test everything and make sure the, the clutch is working well. That snapping at the end is the clutch when the mass reaches its full extent. Clutch seems to be adjusted well. There are some measurements you can take uh, per the service manual, but I found that these parts, have, you get wear, they'll get a groove in them. Uh, the little bumps will be worn. And so it's just best to adjust them until it, until it seems to work right. I mean, there you saw the proper function. So if the antenna is going up and it's not all the way up and this starts clicking, turn the big nut tighter and basically you just don't want to go too tight you just want to have enough tension on this clutch that the mass can be moved up and down add a little bit more tension to it to make up for as it ages or it gets dirty and um, call it good and i'm calling this one good i've done them per the service manual and they don't always work on a on a worn unit so that's why I'm giving the advice that I'm giving. The vent, it goes up. And I find that I can usually just give that a tap. Now the last thing we gotta do is solder the lead wire to the connector. This is where you got to be a little bit careful. Um, if you get this pin too hot, it melts the housing. The way I do it, your mileage may vary. Remember for years I was a two-way microwave technician, so I'm kind of used to soldering. I grab it. I grab the wire and I kind of pinch where I can pinch and pull at the same time. Get the soldering iron on the tip. And get the wire out. So the wire is out, but we still have a blob of solder on the end of it. And let it cool off again. I'm going to heat that. And just like that, now we got an opening. Just barely heated it up and just knocked the, knocked the drop of hot solder out. You can see the wire now, the little tip protrudes through. Let it sit and cool again so that we don't have it melt the plastic.
just like that. And now all we got to do is put the cover on. And we'll give it one final test. There you go. How to rebuild your antenna. If you need um, a new mast, see the links in the description below. We've got them for, um, for several model years. There's slight differences as time goes on. They look similar, but there are slight differences. So there you go. And if you have a newer antenna that automatically starts and stops, uh, the procedure is the same, but there's a switch on this side. And you'll want to look in the service manual on how to do how to make sure you got the switch uh, set up and aligned properly. Those are the ones from the uh, early 70s, late 60s, early 70s. So this, this basic procedure covers most of the 1960s and late 50s for you. Fine Village is a great organization that gives back to the community. Check it out. You'll see so as well. Thanks for watching. Hi, my name is Son and Kirsten. We're here at the 2018 Vine Village Celebration, our major fundraiser here that helps fund programs that we run for people with developmental disabilities here in the greater Napa community. Vine Village was founded by my family and another family, each who had children with disabilities in 1972. And we depend on donations from all sorts of foundations and individuals and businesses throughout our community to help fund these programs and this is our biggest fundraiser of the year. You can donate by clicking the link in the video description.